Hi, I'm Brad Davis, one of the authors of Oculus Rift in Action, and this is a demonstration of a new build of Shader Toy VR, one of the example applications we're developing for the book. This new release involves a complete rewrite of the UI, moving from C++ style widgets to a declarative model written in QML and JavaScript. This allows us to take advantage of a new component in Qt 5.4, specifically designed for the kind of off-screen UI rendering we need. This release also adds support for the official Shader Toy API, as well as support for both 2D and VR enabled 3D shaders. Today I'd like to demonstrate how to convert a given raycasting based 2D shader into one that renders as a VR environment. Here I am at the default shader, a simple color box. To start, I'll load an existing shader I've downloaded from Shader Toy. In this case, pink morphing. As you can see, it's rendering in a 2D window embedded in my 3D environment. In order to make it a full VR shader, I need to add a pragma so that my own application will recognize it as a VR shader and draw it as a skybox. Additionally, I'll need to find and modify the code that sets up the two core ray casting inputs, the ray origin and the ray direction. Adding the pragma is simple. It can be added to any line in the shader, but by convention, I'll put it at the top. Next is the ray casting stuff. This is almost always in the main function near the bottom of the file. In this shader, the ray origin is called cam pose, and the ray or direction is called cam dir. Here, I've encapsulated the calculations that the shader makes to the, set those two values inside of a block. I'm going to go down below this block and overwrite the computed values with my own. For VR shaders, my application provides the ray direction as an input value, idir. So here we initialize camdir with idir's normalized value. The ray origin in the original shader is animated, constantly orbiting the camera around the center of the scene. This kind of animation is undesirable in VR as it can lead to motion sickness. Instead, I'll replace the ray origin with a fixed value, one unit up and two units back from the origin. To this fixed value, I add the head pose position, another custom input provided by my application. Finally, I run the resulting shader. Looking at the results, we see that we're now in a full VR environment that responds to head movement with the morphing shape in front of us. However, the shape looks a little looming, so maybe we can scale that down and move a little further back. To do that, I actually need to scale up the eye pose value. Multiplying it by a factor of 10 will make everything in the scene appear 10 times smaller. Additionally, I'll give us a little more room by moving one more unit away from the center of the scene on the z-axis. Then I recompile the shader. This gives us a more comfortable view. The objects in the scene aren't so close as to be uncomfortable, but since we're scaling up the head movement, they're still close enough that I can lean in for a better look at something. In order to get a better gist of the scene, I'm going to increase the speed of the animation. There's a speed variable at the very top of the file that's currently set to 0.1. I'll change it to 1.1. There's one final tweak I'd like to make, which is to change the direction of view from the z-axis to the x-axis. To do this, we need to swap the z and x values for both the fixed position and for the idir and ipost inputs. The reason I'm doing this is that one of the shapes, two linked spheres, only really looks good from the x-axis. Because the spheres are linked on the z-axis, when looked at from that direction, it just looks like a larger sphere closer to you, unless you lean to one side. As a last task, I'll save the shader under a new name. 